Welcome back to the Voiceovers Podcast. I'm 24K Logan. I'm Cameron Wilmine. Now, today is a very special episode. If you're a motorcycle rider, a fan of Harley Davidson motorcycles, and if you are familiar with Maxton, North Carolina, then you got to be familiar with the Maxton Harley Riders. And today I have the honor and the privilege of speaking with the man who started it all. I'm going to let him introduce himself. John Willie McClarn. I started Maxton Harley Riders in 1982. Um, so how do you get your start with motorcycles in 82? Okay, in 1972, I bought a 500 Honda. I started riding it till I bought my first Harley in 1980. I had my first Maxton Harley Rider show in 1982. 1982, okay. Now, where did the love of motorcycles start? Like, what was it that, you know, drove it to be passionate for you and such a big part of your life? Because you could take $5 and stay gone the whole weekend. You people had hospitality. You got to their town, that's all you need. They take care of the rest. It's not like that now. I definitely understand where you're coming from. Things have, things have definitely changed. Who are the original Max and Holly riders, including yourself? Well, originally, originally it's just a swan, um, moon dog. Rest in peace. Heavy D, Jake, and a lot of other ones that I forgot. But they put us together, because when you ride with Max and Holly Riders, they all became Max and Holly Riders. Whether you were from Georgia, Mississippi, Hammond, Rockingham, it didn't make a difference. If you rode with the Max and Holly Riders, you were the Max and Holly Riders. So y'all basically, you know, y'all were just a group of guys that knew each other for a long time, and y'all all shared a common interest in motorcycles, and y'all said, let's get together and, you know, make this thing something more than kind of what it is, and it just took off from there. It took off from there by letting each one be themselves. Don't try to change them. If you want to be, whoever well, you want to be, as long as you didn't have no arguing and fighting, that's all we cared. But I didn't care where you had a million dollars or ten dollars, you still was a Max and Holly Rock. Right on, right on. So, so do you like ever like watch a movie that made you want to go get a motorcycle or did somebody tell you about it? Do you see somebody driving down the road? Like what made you that decision? Like I want a motorcycle. Because gas prices was high, and like I said, you could take $5 and ride all you want to ride. And I remember you spoke about Daytona Beach. Daytona Beach, Bike Week in Daytona, that was something that was real big for you back in the day. Daytona Bike Week in 1981, it went about seven Harley Davidson motorcycles down there. The rest of them was Honda's Kawasaki in there. But now they got motorcycles a foot long. Got to turn them sideways to pop them. So things have changed. But I haven't changed. John McClellan haven't changed. Absolutely. All right. Now, I remember at one point you said that there was a point in time, I believe it was in 1994, somewhere around there, and you were actually going to stop doing the Max and Harley show. What was it that allowed you to keep it going? And was there somebody in particular that convinced you, or was it just you wanting to continue with well, it was one of my buddies' name was Greg. He was in the army and he went overseas and stayed for a year. He came back and I was gonna let it go. He said, "Don't stop, keep going." And that's the reason I kept going because of what Greg said. I kept going, and now it's bigger than what I could imagine. Absolutely. So you never thought that it was gonna be as big as it did because I remember you would tell stories about, um, like, at one point I think you said it would be a l as little as maybe. 40 people here. It was almost just like a regular party or a cookout. Yes, I have seen it down at least 10 people. Wow. Here. And we had just as much fun as, as they have now. But hospitality is what I always enjoy giving. Hospitality. If you had to guess a random number, how many people, what's the most amount of people that you think have come, have came here for just one particular weekend? 2,000. Okay. Wow, man. So that is yeah. a, a big improvement. So, so you, so you say you give hospitality. You didn't care about the money. You didn't care about the numbers. But when all of that just comes into play, how do you deal with that unexpected success? If you know you didn't touch the meaning. Uh, how I deal with unexpected success is I, I'm still booked. 
I'm still a Max and Holly rapper. No matter how other people change, I'm I'm still Butch. I'm the man that started it all as far as from, from nothing. What has been your best and your worst experience as a biker? Because I know, you know, I've heard a lot of bikers say things like, um, you're not a rider if you ain't fell off or it's just natural for you to fall off your bike just like riding a normal bike. What's been your best experience and your worst experience as a biker? Well, I'm still off with my worst experience. My worst experience was when Moondog got killed on his back on Father's Day weekend. That was my worst. I have just, just, just got to explain my worst experience. Now, my son, Andre, have came to be one of the best experience of Max and Holly Ryder. Andre, my son. Hey, look, I'm glad to be here another year spending with my dad. Anytime my dad needs me, I'm here regardless of anything, right? Honor that mother and our father. That's what I'm doing. I never forget that. That's the way I was raised. I get a phone call, I'm here, looking forward to it. It's all about family, friends, love, and enjoying this time while we're here together. Absolutely, 100%, we appreciate that. Um, I wanted to ask you, what was your, like your first experience with riding motorcycles and what got you started with it? So again, it goes back to my dad, you know. Um, first bike I ever rode was a Kawasaki 900. I was probably about nine years old and couldn't even touch the ground, but I got on the bike and Rode it and stopped it, started. The guy was like, I bet you can't stop it. My dad told me to stop. And from there on, it's been nothing but, you know, the love for motorcycles. Well, I'm, I'm his dad. I remember a little better than that. The first motorcycle was the low ride Harley Davidson. Everybody say he can ride it, but he can't stop it. He stopped and started and took off. And, and he's been riding ever since Harley Davidson until he bought the other motorcycle. But his first ride was okay. on a Harley low rider. In 1982. 82, 82, That's good memory. I'm old, but I still got good memory. This question was for both of y'all. So, is there anything that y'all have learned as bike riders? And, like, is there any, like, life experiences that has taught you? Life experience has taught me, be yourself. I've always been myself. Raggedy, up, dressed down. I'm still put. Hole in the wall. <laughs> hole in the wall. Hole in the wall. Yeah, it's a hole in the wall. I want to go to the oak tree. <laughs> All right. So there's like there's like a newer era of Harley riders or bike riders in general. How do you feel about that? Oh, uh, the new area of bike Harley riders did not like in the eighties. They different. Uh, I got an old side and a new side. You keep the old side separated from the new new side because people don't have respect no more. Right. They have no respect with the young people. I have nothing against them, but they have no respect for older people. If you keep all the older people together, the young people ain't, ain't, ain't gonna come and try to change the old people. Right. But you can't have them running back and forth because they will try to change them. Anywhere, anywhere, you, it's not only back dry script, any event. The young people are trying to take up if you let them. But you got them separated, old will survive. What do you think is the best way for the older generation, the newer generation to kind of come together and be on a, a better understanding since you know times have changed and whatnot? Stay that foot from the ground so when you fall, you ain't got foot to fall. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the so you've been seeing bikes since the 80s. How do you feel about the new like three wheel bikes or the electric bikes or cross rockets? How do you feel about those? I'm a Harley man. A Harley Davidson only got two wheels. A motorcycle only got two wheels. When you got four wheels, I'm not against it. But uh, it is just different in four wheels and two wheels and three wheels. A motorcycle, you look it up, only have two wheels. Anytime you get more than two, you're a different player. You're a different player. But I love everybody. I love everybody. Especially my son. I love my son. You know why? Because he said, honor that mother and father. Absolutely. Montre? Yep. What's been the, I guess, the fastest motorcycle that any of you have ever ridden? Well, again, we, we do three light poles. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, the fastest is I cheat. 
Wow. Well, that's a good way to go to. That's the fact that I'm going to keep. Who going who gonna to come against our rule? Make your rule stay. First thing I tell you, I cheat. I win right in the yard. You ain't got to get on the rule. Because I'm telling you, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. Three light poles, I cheat. My son, he don't know how to cheat. He don't know how to cheat. See? Would you put your bike out against any bike that's out there today? Yeah, because I'm a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The fastest in the day, you know what I do? I'm going to pull over in front of them. I won't let them buy. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody out there that wants to start riding motorcycles, but they're hesitant, you know, they're afraid of accidents and all the horror stories that they might have heard, what would you encourage them to do if they really want to give motorcycle riding a chance? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> don't live in your fears. I mean, you can't live in fears, right? A motorcycle is just as safe as a car, you know? Just go out there, do the right thing, have the right equipment on you're gonna be all right but you know get outside your fears you're gonna be okay and respect the motorcycle absolutely right. but if you come to max and i hit three light poles there ain't no respect i don't own the highway that's your driving license do what you want to do out there that's what they do but we are law abiding citizens we are law abiding citizens if you come here and think you ain't got the law we can get law here but folks take care of take care of it but we are law by system. And I love my son for coming today unexpectedly at the right time to get on this broadcast. First broadcast I ever did with my two grand grandboys and my oldest grandson, my oldest son, Mondre. He came from me and his mother, Brenda. God bless him. Yesterday, uh, one, of, one of his boys from Charlotte was so to come down. And uh, he said, I need help. I do, I need help from my family. And I called and I asked him to come and help me. Do what? Just hold the gate. You got to have a band on. You ain't got a band on. You got you, you to go. Right. You got you to gotta have a band on. But to see, there's something that I can't do because I had a stroke. But y'all be driving around. We're going to put it together. So we hope everybody enjoyed the 41st annual of the show. And it's gonna go on and on after I'm gone. Yeah, I ain't got I can't do all that. They don't come here, they do it for other people, not for me. One day I well, he said he gotta go, but I wanted to say one closing out thing on the broadcast. Well again, um Xavier asked a question earlier, you know, what what has it taught about being a bike? And again, it's almost like the military, right? I did 30 years, I've met a lot of friends, uh you know, I mean, really friends that I could call friends. Same thing, you know, with the motorcycle. I got friends now that, you know, they they are special, right? They're always there for me. It builds brotherhood. I mean, it builds respect. It takes you different places. And again, it's about family and, and riding with people that you can trust and you know you have things in common with. It's just almost like another family, right? And, and again, I can call family members from New York all the way down to Florida. Not There's not a state that I can't stop through, and there's not a Harley guy that, you know, that wouldn't come for me if I'm in a time of need. Uh, and the same for me, you know, uh, same respect. So uh, it's about respect, having that friendship, and brotherhood. Uh, that's a good response. When I started off, me and Chelsea Swan at Mason Harder Route, we, I never thought people would be coming from New Jersey down here to just sit, look, and eat, and enjoy a hole in the wall food. Like, just, just, just like I say, it's a hole in the wall. If you want to go to, to Five Star, go to Holiday Inn or Golden Corral. When you come here, we hole in the wall. And I love everybody. And that's all I got to say about that. You said you slept on your motorcycle too, haven't you? I slept on it in a hole in the wall club down at Merle Beach. You should call it a snake pit. And you live out there in a hole, it was down in the woods. But you slept on it. Nobody bothered you. They said on mess with a sleeping dog. I've been asleep in, in, in the city too, on the, on the asphalt. And nobody didn't bother me. And I felt safe. I felt safe. When I first got on TV, when I first was on camera, I was laying down on the ground at Hooters. Me and one of my best friends named Trouble, Nasty Man. We laying down. Nobody bothered us. Did it bother them, Andre? Nope. How we did, I don't know. Two babies or two 
dog sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, I gotta go. It's been great. All right, uh, been great. Everybody be safe. Looking forward to seeing this. All right, all right. So, I think these are probably the two most important questions, and this was how I had wanted to conclude the interview. So, the first question was to anybody out there that loves motorcycles but they can no longer ride due to a condition or just whatever reason what would you encourage them to do as far as like if they still even if they can't ride motorcycles if they know that they have a strong passionate love for it and it's near and dear to their hearts how would you encourage them to go about still you know maintaining that love and that passion for motorcycles the word you just said, if it's in your heart, it's going to be in your heart. In your heart. Take it. Because you always got your heart. Absolutely. And you always going to have family. All types are in family. But if you got a heart, you got a heart. And you can't erase history either. If, like you said, I mean, you've been riding bikes since the 70s. You know, the history is there. You laid the blueprint and the foundation for future generations of Harley riders like this one right here. Yes, <laughs> yes. This is this is one of the youngest Turbo 2 Harley riders. Oh, yeah, you definitely don't want this one on the road one day. Yeah, <laughs> but well, well, I won't be around when he on the road. Y'all people have to look out for him. I won't have to look out for him. <laughs> and I guess... We kind of touched on this earlier when we asked, like, has biking, or you know, being a biker, has it taught you anything? But just like in your honest opinion, or your your best advice, what is your best life advice? Um, you know, because just the way the world has changed nowadays. I know you said that you noticed a lot of changes um, throughout time, and you know, race relations, and you know, I, I feel like this is the only place in this area where you can have people of different cultures and different backgrounds and races come together and you know for two days and no drama everybody's just getting along and it's you know it's just a great thing to see what is your best life advice for the next generation not just with biking but just life in general well it's about like coming to church to say come as you are i'm the type of person come as you are whether you got a hundred thousand dollars worth of toys or you got a thousand worth of toys, come as you are. We all got toys. Stay off of We all got toys. Uh, I like living by things coming together. Like my son, he came down today unexpectedly and we were doing our first broadcast. We were doing our first broadcast from a generation of my grandson. This is my grandson, baby. So a lot of them here have this for life. This will be around for life. By the time he get grown up, what they be doing, not be on TV. Yeah, Max and Harley Riders definitely could be on TV one day. Um, it, it would be crazy to see that. And I, I think that would be a beautiful thing because you know, you just saying that, that just sparked an idea to, you know, continue to not only carry on the legacy but continue to grow it. You know, this could really become a, a worldwide monument. You just never know. And you are the one that started you know, all of this. None of this is possible without you. We really appreciate all the great words and the great advice. And you coming here is raw, authentic John Willie McLaurin, the original Max and the Holly Rider. Right. And I think y'all, Logan and Zizze, Ace and my son for giving me the opportunity or enjoy this broadcast. Because back in 1982, this was impossible. And uh, we're gonna go on this one, and we might hit it up later. Um, I thank y'all for having with this broadcast. You're welcome. We thank you, and we love you. All right. We appreciate everybody for watching. If you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up, give us a subscription to help us out. We appreciate all the love and support. This was our very first interview, and this is definitely something that we will carry in our hearts forever. Until next time, peace and love to everybody. Out. Oh.